109 days, that is the period for which residents in that ill-fated building that went up in flames were locked down. 109 days inside their houses. Ten people were killed in the fire on the 15th floor of that building because authorities would not open up the building as part of its zero COVID policy. And because of the continuous lockdown for the previous 109 days, 10 people died. None of the cars parked in front of the residential building were operational. And as a result, it took a lot of effort for the fire brigade to clear the cars and reach that high-rise building. Trapped residents had to pay a price with their lives. Take a look at this horrifying depiction of the true effects of zero COVID policy. Flames spread upward from the 15th floor to the 17th floor, with smoke billowing up the 21st floor. According to multiple state media reports, the blaze took about three hours to extinguish. It is also said the fire trucks did not even enter the compound of the building, owing to COVID lockdown rules and hence most of the water spraying was of no use. Even though Rumki has not seen a high number of cases, local officials fearful of losing their jobs are leaning towards more extreme measures such as sealing of buildings to prevent newer outbreaks in their jurisdictions. The region has been under lockdown for close to three months. Survivors say that people were not allowed to step outside of the building. In a rare case of occurrence, the Uyghurs and the Han ethnicity citizens protested together against such extended lockdowns and shouted at the authorities to lift these lockdowns. The mayor of the Urumqi municipality has reportedly apologized for the incident. Pandemic-related lockdown fatigue has increasingly triggered the people of China to protest and raise their voices against the lockdown. It remains to be seen how long this current status quo continues. In New Delhi with Sneha Murdani and Sai Kiran Kanan for India Today. Uh, Ross, one final question to you since you're in Taiwan. Does, uh, does Taiwan, how is Taiwan seeing this? Uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's been a rough year as far as the island is concerned. Uh, do they see any blowback, any impact uh, on Taiwan, uh, considering what's happening in China right now? Uh, putting aside the military risk and, and the political issues, just on the COVID side of things, yeah. uh, the government today here in Taiwan, they announced an end to the quota on inbound travelers. So mm. uh, even though quarantine had been eliminated, there was still a quota on the number of travelers just so the government could, could manage the inflow of people. Uh, but the government was very clear that they were not reopening an earlier program, pre-COVID program, that allowed travel between uh, the regions neighboring China and Taiwan's offshore islands of Jinmen yeah. and Mazu. So there previously was a travel bubble that existed between these offshore islands and China where Chinese tourists could visit those islands, but they couldn't come over here to the main Taiwan island. Uh, but very, it was very interesting that the government, uh, they, they don't feel that it's safe to allow in Chinese tourists in large numbers, and they were quite emphatic about that.